Hey guys, last video you might remember we played, or I played, Beyond the Ice Palace and I kept going on and on about a game called Ghosts and Goblins, which that game is quite similar to. And I thought we're going to have a look at the SD version of Ghosts and Goblins. The game was released by Elite in 1990 and the 8-bit conversions were released already in 86, 87, so the SD and Amiga version took a long time to appear. And I remember seeing the ad for the game back in the day and uh, I was a bit puzzled because it's got to be one of the laziest game ads I've seen. It's basically a bunch of toys and, and an Atari ST. I'm not entirely sure what they were thinking here but probably something along the lines of let's save some money. <laughs> So the ad isn't that great, what about the game? Well, let me just uh, already spoil it for you, it's not great. I was deeply disappointed by this one. And it's of course based on the Capcom arcade game, released in 1985. And if you've been watching my channel, you probably know that this is one of my all-time favorite arcade games. I just love it to bits. And if you haven't checked out my Ghost and Goblins mini documentary, by all means do so. There's going to be a link in the description. So by all means, check it out. But yeah, I was really disappointed with the SD version. It's not necessarily a terrible game, but it's certainly not great. And I was, of course, more disappointed with it since I had so high expectations. So uh, yeah, let's start it up and see if we can get anywhere, shall we? Got a pretty nice title screen here, or loading screen, I think. Not entirely sure who made it. I think maybe it's digitized, perhaps. And not entirely sure who made the original artwork, by the way. Uh, I think this is the same artwork that's on the arcade fly. If anyone knows, please uh, make a comment. I'm a bit curious. So, uh, yeah, Ghosts and Goblins. Before we get going with that, I would just like to welcome my most recent patron, DCB. Thank you very much. And also a big thank you to Jan for increasing his contribution. And of course also a huge thank you to the uh, rest of my patrons. Guys, I really, really appreciate that you're supporting my channel. Thank you. Let's just press fire and uh, uh, yeah, let's just dive into this one, shall we? So you can see the graphics are quite different from the arcade game, which uh, I mean, it's not necessarily a bad thing. They look very nice. They're made by Steve Pickford, a really talented artist. And apparently he uh, um, made a comment about the uh, the development of this game. It was apparently a very, very long process and it was stuck in development hell. And I think he said like something along the lines of the game for the development time being a never ending nightmare or a living nightmare or something like that. <laughs> so that could explain a couple of things about the game. A couple of the problems the game is suffering from the Amiga version of um, Ghosts and Goblins is really, really rather good. One of the better conversions of the arcade game. It's got almost arcade perfect graphics. But I don't know why they just went with this, uh, these graphics that are quite unlike the, ah oh shit, <laughs> uh, the arcade game. But it, I mean, again, it's not terrible. They look, uh, they look fine. The bigger problem is really that they they didn't nail the gameplay. I mean, the the game feels like it's just running too fast and... I mean, just look at Arthur, look at his legs, they just... <laughs> what the hell is going on here? He's just running like a... he says some sort of mental case, I don't know. And it's got some absolutely awful hit detection. I mean, it's... it's... Uh, it's probably the biggest problem with the game. And also there's a lot of levels missing. I think the game ends after stage three or four or something. After the dragon boss fight, um, the game ends. Oh, these guys, they're st what the? Yeah, the shit hit detection rears its ugly head already. <laughs> I wonder if you can shoot these guys in the face. You're not supposed to be able to, but let's try. Maybe not. I just remember there was some version of the game where you could actually... What? Yeah, I think that was uh, crap hit detection again. <laughs> uh, you're supposed to be able to shoot them in the back, these guys, because they have a... Mm, yeah, I'm already hating this. <laughs> Get out of my face, you annoying... Whoa. Yeah, it's... it's just... it's just... Pants, you know? 
Uh, let's try this again, shall we? All right, we are back in the forest without any pants. Well, we have underpants, so that's a good thing, I guess. But we don't have any armor, but hey, we'll be fine anyway. We don't need no stinking armor getting past the flying knights of annoyance. Come on, guys. This bit is actually... Oh, crap. It's actually harder than in the arcade game. It's uh, quite remarkable. But I'm gonna get this done somehow. Jump, jump, run, flee. What the? Uh, and again, we can't jump and uh, or we can't turn around in uh, when we jump. I can't hit them either, but who cares? I don't give a crap. <laughs> I'm not sure if we can get the uh, the armor in the forest. I don't think we can, but yeah, who cares? We'll be fine anyway. And here's another annoyance, just as in the arcade, when you jump, you need to finish the jump. You can't change direction, you can't reposition uh, Arthur like you can. For instance, in Super Mario Brothers, you can move about in the air. You can't do that here. And of course, the little piggies are going to come out. The, the forest pigs, I hate them. They are really super annoying in the SD version. They will just happily, yeah, materialize out of nowhere and just stick a fork in your face. And uh, I don't like that, not surprisingly. Ghosts, go away, ghosts. Usually you can just run past here, I think. But I don't really remember. I didn't play the game too much back in the day because I was so deeply disappointed with it that I just like, I just stopped playing it because yeah, and it does get worse. Ah, you bastard. Here's the annoying little unicorn bastard. Could you stop? And he keeps jumping. Normally the uh, the arcade Cyclops is a little bit different. He will not continuously jump. He will give you a chance to move away, but not this guy. He's a prick. <laughs> oh God. It's gonna run, flee, not stop because these guys are so hard to deal with. If you stop, you tend to get murdered because they will just spawn all around you and murder you horribly. Get away from that thing, that fork did not hit me. Clearly. <laughs> you can usually get him to jump. Uh, just jump uh, over you and keep doing that and then you can usually kill him pretty easily. I actually forgot about that. So thank God we finished the first stage. And yeah, again, sounds great. Music is very nice, even the sound effects. Pretty good. Graphics really gorgeous. But, no, I I was so disappointed with this game. I can't forgive Elite for what they did. And what the hell, why am I falling down there? Get away hmm. And look at this, how they are following you around. The enemy patterns are absolutely hopeless to deal with in, uh, in this version. They don't behave anything at all like the arcade version, which... And they're so faster sometimes. I'm just going to ignore these... This bastard flowers and just gonna get out of here ah <laughs> yeah uh, I'm still not liking this one if that is not completely apparent by now let's go over to the uh... oh what they're not supposed to do that they're supposed to uh, keep going that direct well they kind of occasionally do change direction in the arcade as well I think but not as often as they do here uh. Oh boy. Oh man. Well, let's go to the uh, the sailor dudes here and uh, try and kill them, shall we? Nope. Don't. Don't. Don't do that. I think there's another ladder ladder over here. Yeah, there is. And we're gonna do this. We're gonna kill these guys because just like in the arcade, I believe we can fire through the walls, which is kind of weird. I know. No, ooh, and again, awful shit hit detection. <laughs> All right, we are back in Sailor City, in the harbor here. What? He is nowhere near me. <laughs> oh man, I think the music is too fast as well, isn't it? Or am I just? Imagining that. 
maybe I am, but it does sound a little bit too fast. But yeah, nice music. I think we can get hold of a... No, we can't. Thought maybe there was an armor or something up here, but no. Come on. Get over here. Get over here. So I can get past you. No, 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 no. Ah, oh, they're so annoying. They keep following you about. Sometimes, and then other times they just change direction. They are fairly well done compared to the arcade version because these guys are super annoying and have an annoying tendency of just moving about in the most horrifically random fashion in the arcade. Sometimes it's even difficult to get down to their level because they will try and uh, cheese you by always guarding the ladder, little sh fuckers. <laughs> But so far, it's been pretty faithful to the um, arcade version. I don't remember how far I got uh, back in the day in the SD version. Probably not too far because I just kind of gave up on it. The disappointment was just too much to handle. Oh, you missed me. That's interesting. Okay, we can do this. Hopefully. Even got that crow, good times. Let's see if we can avoid being murdered by these platforms because they do behave in a very unpredictable fashion. They're not like the arcade either. They, they don't seem like they've really spent too much, ah shit, time on trying to perfect the enemy movements and, you know, in general, the movement and behavior of the arcade. The Amiga version uh, manages to succeed much better there. Yep, that worked. Let's see if we can do the same cheese mechanics on this guy. Come on. Yeah, this never fails. <laughs> you can always cheese these poor unicorn boys doing that. I think, at least. But I think this is the last time we're going to encounter them because the game will end after the Dragon Ball so there won't be any more unicorn cyclopses in the game. Oh! Here we are in the graveyard number two! Well, maybe this isn't strictly speaking a graveyard, but I always kind of thought it was. It's a bit similar to the first level because there's zombies about and also a new enemy, these towers that fire balls of doom at you. And I'm, I'm not getting any decent weapons. I don't want that. I don't want that. Oh, goddamn. <laughs> I don't want this useless axe. <laughs> uh, oh, shit. Oh, never mind. You should never jump like that because the enemy will get out of the ground so quickly that there's just no way of not dying. And what the hell? I'm like four metric miles away there. Nowhere near that red arena. At least the Red Arimas are slightly easier in this version, I have to say, than compared to the arcade. They are a bunch of absolute dick baskets in the arcade version. No! No, please don't. I thought it was going to get me there, but no! What the... Oh, and stupid, stupid ladder. Let's just go this way. At least this weapon is kind of... kind of good in this situation. Ah, I was just going to say, I wonder if he's going to shoot me in the face with a fork. And of course he did. Just that. I lost my armor again, but what are you going to do? Yeah, at least the Red Arimas are significantly easier to deal with in this version. Far less... What? I'm like eight metric miles away this time. He's nowhere near me and he still gets me. It's ridiculous. <laughs> And again, nowhere near me. It's kind of weird because the hit detection seems to be worse on this stage compared to the others. I'm not sure why. Kind of weird how he gets stuck there sometimes on the edge. Ah, oh, interesting. I didn't hit him there and he still died. Well, as long as it's that, that way, I'm, I'm fine. Ghost bastard. Let's see if I can... Oh, no. Oh, I managed to get away from the Arima and the ghost. 
So, oh no, I didn't. Oh, come on! Would you look at that? That's so cheap! Alright, let's go face the dragon. Ah. Uh, lousy hit detection. Let's face off against the dragon boss. Shouldn't be too difficult, I'm hoping. And again, he's nowhere near me. <laughs> Alright, take it. Take it to the face. Yeah. Alright. Nice music here. Let's enjoy it. And our 5,000 bonus points before we... Uh, yeah, there's one more stage. I wasn't entirely sure if the game was over. But there is actually one more stage, I believe. Ah, oh, god damn it. <laughs> All right. I hate these platforms. I really do. <laughs> they are very itchy and weird. Don't behave at all like in the arcade game. So I'm completely lost at what's going on here. Let's hope I can get down there. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I think there's ground over here, right? Yes. Uh... No! Why am I jumping twice? Balls! Come here, you bastard platform. Oh, here's another red arima. And this should be fairly easy to deal with, I think. There might be one more red arima. Oh, goddammit. The fires are much easier to get past on the arcade, strangely enough. Ah, oh, die. Ah, oh, these little devils. They're quite, they're, they're a little bit too fast, making it quite hard getting away from them sometimes. No, I mean, look at that. What am I supposed to do there? He's like matching my speed and just keeps above me. It's so freaking annoying. <laughs> Again with the asterisks. I kept getting shot by that in uh, Beyond the Ice Palace as well. And uh, I fire, nothing happens, and I get hit from five miles away. And I do mean metric miles. At least the shit hit detection is beneficial from me as well sometimes. Oh, look at this, look at this. How am I supposed to... Oh, I can fire forward and I can kill him when he's above me. That's, uh, <laughs> that's just great. I mean, it is great. Does it work again? It works again! The hitboxes are the size of small countries in this game. Oh! Yeah, they are. Alright, Mr. Dragon. Let's do this. Let's do the dance of death. Unless, of course, I get cheese hitboxed. Ah, I'm back. You're not gonna get rid of me that easily. Okay. Just a head to deal with. Yeah. And there we go. End of game. Get another 5,000 bonus points and get to enjoy the end of level music. And uh, yeah, that's it. At least there's a pretty nice looking end screen with some animation. Congratulations, you have rescued the princess. And there's the end boss looking very angry because he's not even really in the game. Because he just stands there looking upset, doing nothing. <laughs> Such a weird ending, but at least you got that. So, yeah, not a great version of Ghosts and Goblins. A big disappointment for me. Other people might, of course, disagree, but just way too short and uh, way too crappy hit detection. But let's uh, have a look at what some other people thought of the game before we end. As the action gave the game an overall of 69%, and one of the reviewers write, Personally, I found the game a little dated and didn't enjoy it as much as I'd hoped. Therefore, unless you're prone to sudden outbreaks of intense nostalgia, I would strongly recommend that you look elsewhere when it comes to spend those hard-earned pennies. And another one concludes with, There's quite a few examples of this style of game floating around at the moment, but I must say I've played this a lot more than the others I've tested. And as usual, they complain about the game not being original enough, but it's an arcade conversion, for God's sake. <laughs> and the final review compares the game unfavorably to Ghouls and Ghosts, and he writes, 
The graphics are repetitive and the animation on the Knight character is horrendous, as there are so few frames of animation. The collision detection is also very suspect at times, sound is average, but really doesn't help an otherwise mediocre conversion. My advice would be to avoid ghosts and goblins and spend your money on something a little more worthwhile. Kinda weird how they give the game 69 points and yet some of the reviewers still seem to like the game. Uh, SD action was a bit weird, like that. <laughs> The Nesty format gave the game the exact same overall rating of 69% and Mark Hyam wrote If it had been released 18 months ago it would have been praised. Now it's too little, much too late. And again they just keep complaining about this game being a relic and yeah I'm not sure if I agree with that. If this had been a good conversion this would still have been pretty damn great. But it's not! And he wasn't particularly impressed with the graphics and uh, tedious sound effects either. I think they're perfectly okay, to be honest. But yeah, it's it's not a great game. It's super frustrating and just a huge disappointment. So, uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, quick peek at Ghosts and Goblins and uh, hope to catch you in the next video. Cheers!